Who is the top pitching prospect in baseball? Let's look through the pitch shape data of three candidates, the Tigers' Jackson Job, the Cubs' Kate Horton, and the Pirates' Paul Skeens, and try to come to some conclusion. And we will start with Jackson Job, who began his 2023 season in the middle of June due to lumbar spine inflammation, but he went on to put up 84 strikeouts to just six walks in 64 innings before going to the Arizona Fall League or the AFL and posting a 2.87 ERA in four starts. The pitch I wanna start here and make note of is the cutter, which is a pretty new pitch for him. Out of high school, Job had a curveball that was up to 3,000 RPMs. It was a nasty pitch, but this season he essentially split that pitch into a pair of offerings. A sweeper, which we'll get to in a second, and then also a cutter, which I just mentioned. For a cutter to grade out well in a stuff model, you generally either have to throw it hard or create some glove side movement to it. And Job is doing both with this cutter. 90 miles per hour is about one mile per hour above the average cutter in Major League Baseball. And five inches of glove side movement is about three inches more than the average cutter in the Major Leagues. It was his fourth most used pitch down the stretch last season where it allowed a sub 300 slugging percentage against on a pretty small sample of balls in play. And we saw him increase the usage of that cutter a bit in the AFL, especially to left-handed hitters, which is encouraging of things to come with that offering. His sweeper has also been pretty nasty. It's primarily thrown to right-handed hitters as a swing and miss offering in two strike counts or deep counts. And he had a pretty gaudy swing and miss on it throughout the season as well. Most impressive to me, however, was his above average zone rate on the offering itself relative to other major league sweepers, which generally exist outside of the zone. The fastball that this entire repertoire is based around is also pretty solid. When he got to the AFL, however, we saw some slight regression. The movement changed to something more like 16 inches of vertical break with just five inches of arm side movement, but the pitch did hold velocity. This AFL fastball for Job was an objectively worse pitch from a movement perspective compared to what he had during the season, as you're seeing right here. But the swing and miss on the AFL fastball actually went up and the contact quality improved so we have some competing thoughts here. I would chalk up the AFL success to more small sample and really hope that he kind of goes back to the in-season shape on the four seam. But regardless, we have to consider the probability that the AFL fastball we saw with some slight regression is the pitch that he will have moving forward. My two main theories as to why this fastball change could have happened boils down to one, the ball was different than he was using in the AFL compared to the minor leagues, or number two, the cutter that he started throwing, which I really liked, affected his fastball shape, which is a common thing that occurs to some guys as they rely more heavily on cutters. They start to cut their fastball, they lose a little bit of arm side movement and vertical movement, which is exactly what happened with Job in the AFL. I'm pretty curious to see this fastball shape when he comes out, hopefully at AAA this season in 2024. That'll give us a better idea of whether that four seam shape from the AFL was actually what we will see eventually when he gets to the major leagues. Lastly, I also have to mention his changeup, which held a nearly 50% swing and miss rate last season after July 1st. And it separates a ton off his four seam, both from a velocity and vertical movement standpoint, which is a really good combination to get swing and miss on a changeup. One of the perks of this video is that I had an individual on Twitter build me a stuff model which is essentially trying to distill down a pitcher's stuff or that combination of release characteristics, velocity, and movement into an individual number. Enoceros has one, and I actually tried to scale this so that it kind of matches up from a scaling standpoint to his, which is on fan graphs publicly, such that 100 is an average pitch in that particular category, and a 112 is one standard deviation above the average, so a plus pitch, and that one standard deviation above the average generally results to about 85th percentile or so. And here are the grades for Jackson Job this season in the minor leagues, removing the Arizona Fall League. Really strong here from Job. There are very few pitchers with four average or better pitches in the minor leagues. This is one of the reasons why he's in consideration to be the top pitching prospect in baseball. If he sticks with this slight cut on his fastball from the Arizona Fall League, I'd expect the grade to fall a bit to the 105 area. So this forcing grade you're looking at right here above 110 might be a bit aggressive, but regardless of that, a 115 Stuff Plus cutter is super strong. It's one of the reasons I really like that offering. And I think Stuff Plus is underselling his changeup as it tends to do with a lot of changeups because of how location dependent their results can be. And also that you have to model them off fastballs more so than for other breaking balls. Job to me is a pretty prototype right-handed pitching prospect with four average to plus pitches. 
in a really strong repertoire where he's actually able to throw strikes, which I think is pretty important for pitching prospects. But there's no real outlier characteristics in his release, but there is some really high spin here. So this is kind of like your spin monster prototype four pitch guy, if you want to categorize him as a pitching prospect. And we can compare that to a guy like Kate Horton, who is the Cubs 2022 first round pick. Kate is a bit undersized as a pitcher, but his release height is actually above average due to his relatively high arm angle. He throws from a pretty over the top slot. He has a fastball that is of the cut ride variety, which means that it has less arm side movement than the average forcing fastball thrown, and that it still maintains a reasonable amount of that vertical break or lift or carry, or whatever you'd like to call it. The simpler way to put it is just that he cuts his fastball a bit. This makes it slightly less effective versus right-handed hitters and a bit more effective versus left-handed hitters. But of course there are other variables to consider as well on a particular pitch like his command of the offering, which has been really good almost at every stop of the minor leagues. We can see this control command balance represented in his strike rate, which was around 70% on the four seam from July 1st onward, a touch higher than the MLB average for four seam fastballs. I don't think this pitch will be an offering that has a major league average swing miss rate for a four seam fastball, which is around 22% in the major leagues, but I, I don't necessarily think that matters a ton given that the expected WOBA or a damage statistic in the minor leagues on this offering was right around 330 in a sample of about 100 balls in play, which to me is strong and it's likely a byproduct of what we're talking about in terms of strikes and it relates back to his command in the offering, which is really strong. His slider is the key to his repertoire. It averages around 84 to 85 miles per hour with about 11 inches of horizontal break which is harder than the average sweeper with right around the same amount of movement. The pitch held a swing and miss rate north of 40% for most of the season, jumping to around 50% at times as well. It was nearly impossible to slug, giving right-handed hitters fits. The average swing miss for a sweeper in the major leagues is somewhere around 33% or so. On top of the slider, he's also throwing a curveball mainly to left-handed hitters. And I believe this pitch is what you would call a death ball. A death ball is a phrase that became popular during the World Series in relation to the Texas Rangers left-handed pitcher who's now a free agent, Jordan Montgomery. It's essentially a bullet slider, so think of almost a pinwheel spinning out of a pitcher's hand thrown with a higher than average release, like Cade Horton or like a Jordan Montgomery. And it drops just a bit more than gravity on the way to the plate and doesn't really have a ton of side-to-side -side movement. You can see Cade's metrics right here on his curveball or death ball whereas a normal curveball would probably be a bit slower and have maybe five inches or more so drop to it. The advantage of a death ball is that you could usually throw them harder than curveballs. You also eliminate some of the pop out of hand that a normal curveball has. And this creates a pretty steep approach into the zone or vertical approach angle of the pitch when located down, which is really what I think they're trying to get after with death balls for the most part. But again, it really has to be from a high slot guy. You don't have to call it a death ball. You could call it like a short curveball. I don't really care what you call it. You call it a more depthy slider. It's in this ambiguous territory between your standard curveball and what we normally think of as a slider. So I guess that's why we've called it a death ball. I might make a video on this at some point because I think it's an interesting topic to get into different shapes of pitches and subtypes. But until then, we will continue on Kate Horton. In the same vein that his curveball or death ball is an offering that he primarily throws to left-handed hitters, the Cubs also gave him another weapon in a changeup that they kind of played with throughout the season. He was toying with a Kevin Gossman style grip. And as the season progressed, we saw the pitch separating more from his four seam fastball to the point where the grade on the offering notably jumped when you compare pre July 1st and post July 1st. Less vertical break in the instance of changeups here, even at the expense of some velocity is a good thing. And it picked up a lot of arm side movement too to separate further from the four seam. So Kate Horton, like Jackson Job, is a guy who held strike rates pretty squarely above the major league average for each of his given pitch types. He's a bit more unique, I would say, in his mix with this cut right fastball, unique curveball shape here in this death ball, we're calling it. And he's still kind of working on a changeup, whereas Jackson Job's is pretty advanced. And yeah, I guess I see Jackson Job as more of a traditional pitcher from a shape standpoint. But at the end of the day, they both generated strikeout rates over 30% when you sum up their innings this year. Job with the squarely lower walk rate and when you jump over to Stuff Plus here, Cade's stuff doesn't grade out as favorably as Job's in my Stuff Plus model, but it's still really strong. And we also haven't seen him with an MLB baseball yet, which I think has some implications. Although I don't think it'll affect him a ton because he's already cutting his fastball a bit. I will make a slight adjustment here on the Stuff Plus, however, of Cade Horton's slider because the data output I have to run this model actually 
combined his slider and curveball into one offering. That's why it's kind of a middling grade. So the slider I think should jump up a bit and the curveball will probably just linger around average because it's kind of an odd shape without a ton of comps. So this is kind of my Lance adjustment to this stuff plus model as to what I think his stuff plus should actually be when you separate out that slider and curveball. The last case we will make is that of Paul Skeens. I've already made a pair of videos on him, both of them touching on how distinct he is as a pitcher, which is perhaps a deviation from a guy like Jackson Job or even Cade Horton to some extent. Skeens actually has pretty below average extension, especially for his six foot four height, but throwing from a nearly full sidearm slot allows him to get down to a below average release height at about 5.7 feet. The true uniqueness in Skeens' mechanics comes from how horizontal his release is. It averages out to about 3.3 feet towards the third base side of the rubber, which is around the 97th percentile among right-handed pitchers in Major League Baseball. When he faces a left-handed hitter, that horizontal release moves out to over four feet, which is crazy, and versus righties, that's more average around 2.5 feet. The most distinct pitch in his mix is his four-seam fastball. The movement profile is actually more comparable to a two-seam fastball than a four-seam. He's just so sidearm that holding a ball with a four-seam orientation from his release is just gonna create this shape as opposed to one that has carry to it. It's similar to Emerson Hancock's four-seam from the Mariners, but it's also like six miles per hour faster, so how much is it really like Emerson Hancock's fastball? Probably not too much, but we're struggling for comps here again, specifically when you only look at four-seam fastballs. If you want to comp it to a sinker, Sandy Alcantara's sinker works pretty well. Unfortunately, we just have to stick to shapes here with Skeens because the sample I have for batted ball and whiff data for him are just too low to make anything out of in the minor leagues, given he only threw seven innings in pro ball last year. Apart from the four-seam fastball, Skeens also has a sinker, which is a pretty filthy offering. He was basically able to cut about eight inches of lift or vertical break to the offering and add three inches of arm side movement by only sacrificing about two miles per hour. This might be a hot take, but I actually think there's a chance he throws this sinker more than his four seamer to right-handed hitters eventually. I just think it would produce perhaps similar results from a swing and miss standpoint and be very hard to lift at above 96 miles per hour. Moving away from his fastball, Skeens has some odd things going on with his breaking ball. When he was in college, it's my understanding that he had a sweeper and more of a downer version of the sweeper, which was tagged as a curveball. It looked something like this on a pitch plot. And upon entering pro ball, there emerged a third slider cutter type pitch to bridge between the sinker and sweeper. You can see that in this plot from low A right here via true media. That bridge slider cutter slutter in between thing that we're talking about here was about 88 miles per hour with four to six inches of vertical break and basically no side to side movement. There's a saying that any slider above 85 miles per hour is a good slider. And I think that is the case here with Paul Skeens. Alex Fast, who used to work for Pitcher List and now works for MLB, recently interviewed Skeens and Skeens didn't seem to acknowledge this new pitch. So I'm a bit unsure what to make of what I see in the data at least. Right now, I think that this is a distinct third breaking ball for him, even in this small of a sample. I still like the sweeper more to righties, however, but something with less spin-induced movement like this cutter is something he would be able to throw for strikes more than the big sweeper, I would imagine. So perhaps that's the advantage of the offering. Lastly, Skeens' changeup is pretty traditional for a lower slot pitcher. He's killing a lot of vertical break off his four seam, throwing it hard around 89 to 90 miles per hour. But I will kind of play amateur pitch design here and wonder whether this is an offering that he can kill slightly more vertical break on by going to something maybe like Logan Webb's split changeup grip, try to get more depth on the offering, make it even nastier. When talking about command, I really think you have to connect it to the pitcher's velocity. Lower velocity guys that survive in the major leagues generally have a better inherent level of command to it. Uh, as you move faster and throw harder, I do think it is slightly harder to command baseball. We don't know a ton about command, but that's probably one of the main tenets. So with Skeens at 98 plus miles per hour, I think he does have above average command. He's not a guy that dots 98, 99, 100 in my opinion, watching him. I think he just has so much east-west movement that it's easy for him to center over the plate and kind of let everything spray in multiple directions. You watch a guy like DeGrom, he spots 98 to 101 in my opinion, slightly different from Skeens, but I think it's a byproduct again of how his balls move. I don't know necessarily if he'll ever need command. I think he just needs to generally control. And again, that centering of the plate and having everything kind of spray off of that. As we peek at his stuff plus, we see that his fastball and curveball are both above average. So is the sweeper and the sinker. Unfortunately, we don't have enough of a sample on, but I'm pretty sure it would be around a hundred or so because of the velocity on the offering. So about an average sinker. And then the changeup doesn't really grade out well, but again, that's because 
there's not a ton of separation from his primary forcing fastball, yet visually, I think the pitch works. And again, the small sample results here we have from a ground ball and whiff perspective are pretty solid. So I'd lean on that for the changeup and the success he had with the offering in college. Skeens is more of a unique look, kind of funky four seam shaped guy with a good level of command for his velocity. And that contrasts a bit again with the prototype mix of Jackson Job with the high spin or more of your kind of breaking ball results guy in Cade Horton. So while these guys are all right-handed pitchers with good track record, and I think the similarity between all of them is that their strike rates are really solid. So I think there's minimal risk here and these guys end up as relievers. They all have subtle differences that kind of line them up in different ways. And my rank of these guys as it currently stands is I would have Paul Skeens number one based on track record, kind of throwing away some of the injury concerns he's had in the past. I just think the combination of the strikes he's able to throw, baseline stuff plus being pretty solid, and the fact that he's got some funky, unique look to him from the horizontal perspective that I think will play at the major league level differentiates him. Job and Horton, I think despite one being a high schooler in Job and Horton having college experience in the College World Series, they're pretty similar to me and I have them pretty close, but I think right now my take is to go with Cade Horton number two and Jackson Job number three ever so slightly. Perhaps that's a track record thing. Perhaps I do see some embedded risk in high schoolers as opposed to college pitchers. But at the end of the day, I think the cutting on Jackson Job's fastball in the AFL is something that we were gonna are we are gonna see coming in 2024 this season, and that might slightly tick down the grade there. I love the spin rate, I love everything else going on with the repertoire. I just wonder whether Cade's kind of cut right forcing that he's already had and shown barrel missing success with is a little bit stronger in his repertoire. I like the change of advancement there. Perhaps as crazy as it sounds, maybe Jackson Job is almost already maxed out. If I'm wrong between those two guys, it's probably because that cutter from Jackson Job ends up being a pretty nasty offering. Whereas K doesn't really have anything in that vein that he's able to throw for strikes as much, even though the slider is really strong. So these are my top three pitching prospects right now. I think this is about consensus in the industry, but I'm very curious in your thoughts as to who you think is the number one pitching prospect in baseball. There's a lot of guys I missed here. I understand and bring up like Andrew, Andrew Painter, or Jacob Mizorowski, or Hurston Waldrop or more fun guys with a ton of stuff. Perhaps there's another episode in the works that I will go through those guys. But these are the strike throwing prototype. I think low variance, potentially high upside, starting pitching prospects. And I would order them Skeens, Kate Horton, Jackson Zobe. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching as always.